Hey everyone, welcome back to Tea and Therapy. My name is Emma, I'm a qualified therapist and a trained life coach. And in these videos, I give like a lot of the stuff that's going on in the media, in the world of celebrity. Um, I talk about these things and I give it a therapeutic perspective to hopefully, so you can align it to something that might be going on in your life that might help you, um, well, just give some tips and tools to hopefully navigate uh, that. If you want to have more um, support in regards to therapy related issues. I do have another channel called Just Therapy UK where I solely focus on mental health, um, life coaching, uh, therapy tips. It's a very new channel so please go across and check that out because there might be something there that might help you um, and also if you would like to subscribe I'd be very grateful to get me to my first thousand subscribers. Um, so yeah so that being said if you want to join in this video where I talk about what is kind of going on in the world of Harry and Meghan because that seems to be the main focus right now and what pretty much most people want on this channel albeit that you are sick and tired of them I totally get that but they are in a sense perfect to fo to kind of look at the world of psychology and and, and behavior um so yeah so let's kind of pick that apart so for those of you who've been with me for a while you should know what to do by now grab your drink of choice whether it be tea whether it be coffee whether it be water because you are detoxing or your body is a temple um just but please be aware of those plastic containers because we obviously want to make sure that we are environmentally friendly um i just wanted to add that in there because i have noticed that a lot of people sort of uh, drink a lot of water but they're still in plastic bottles so um yeah so just be mindful of that um whether you would also like to add a little something something and as always i'm with my cherries and berries i do fluctuate with the water i do try i do try but um yeah this is my fave um so yeah so let's grab that drink um no like I say, if you want to add a little something, see, honestly, go through the menopause. And I know people moan at me for going on about it, but I don't care because it is a thing and it's every day. Um, I literally forget. It's, I'm like Dory. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I'm literally like, oh, wait, shiny things. What's happening? Um, so add a little something, something to that drink of choice, because as the flag says behind me, which for some reason I can't seem to navigate the camera today, um, it's five o'clock somewhere. So grab your drink and let's dive right in. give a shout out to the Royal Grift. So as a rule, I try not to watch too many channels purely and simply, even though I might subscribe to them to support them, because I really want what I talk about to come from myself and not necessarily be so heavily influenced by perhaps what another YouTuber says. Also, because it's it would be very easy for me to, well, maybe to kind of watch something and then be like, oh, you know what, I'll piggyback off that. And I really don't want to do that. So I try to, um, yeah, do that as little as possible. And not just that, as I don't have a lot of time. Uh, because this, honestly, what she does in regards to research is is phenomenal it's phenomenal um and i just think that she really does deserve the support and the notoriety that might come with what she does because she you know this is not a channel that just talks about things she really really does her research and i, I genuinely don't know how she manages um to find the stuff that she does i mean it must be so time consuming um so i want to yeah i want to give a big shout out to her and obviously i did notice in her recent video that she did a shout out to paula m because i, I believe that she um picked up on some things and i think you know this is you know we we are definitely us youtubers that are really trying to research the truth um into things really deserve those mentions because they 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 are putting in the work um i might not always agree with a lot of what they might say 
but I think credit where credit is due. Um, but I will say that she is a very interesting channel, The Royal Grift, and, and I do actually really like a lot of her videos. Um, and in this particular one, she talks about the journalist Russell Myers. And for I don't know if many of you know, but Russell Myers is he's a royal journalist. And for the most part, he's been very against. Uh, well, he's a royalist, so he's been very against Harry and Meghan and what they've what they've done. But I was watching her video and I thought, you know what, I want to talk about this because it's almost like he's done a, a 180. It's, it, it's almost like he, it, it, in a roundabout way, he's not supporting Harry and Meghan. But it's almost like what he's saying is all they need to do is just do some some charity work to kind of just, you know, turn the tables a little bit and start doing some good things for the people to fall back in love with them. Now. I agree with what the Royal Grift is saying. It's like, when when were the public ever really in love with Harry and Meghan? Because, okay, yes, the public was in love with Harry. And I'm sure that a lot of people know this. He was a royal that pretty much could get away with whatever he got away with. And nobody batted an eyelid. In fact, the, we've I've said before that the royal family cover, have, I believe, covered up a lot of his behaviour. And what we're seeing now is actually the real Harry. I think he has been, and if you haven't seen my Prince Harry series, please go and check that out. There is a playlist on that where I talk about how I believe he has been this way from the beginning. He's always been, in a sense, a very precocious, poorly behaved uh, child. Um, and this has then carried on into adulthood. Now, I also think that a lot of things were forgiven because it was almost like, oh, you know, Prince Harry, the lovable rogue. Um, but if you actually look at some of the behaviours that he's done, it's pretty shocking. But for some reason, we normalised it. So then you have then obviously he marries Meghan. And I have spoken in length about what I think about this particular marriage. Do I think it was um, a love story? Absolutely not. Was it lust? Absolutely. Um, I do not believe, because if I'm honest, and I think most of you probably know this, these two types of personalities do not know healthy love. They don't. They don't know how to love somebody in a healthy way, which then creates a sustainable marriage or relationship. There is not a relationship on the planet with these two types of personalities that is healthy. Now, that's not to say, in some degree, people can work on relationships. Of course they can. But we're dealing with what I believe is someone with narcissistic personality disorder and then someone else with a personality disorder, plus various other issues that are kind of going on here. So you've got very, two very toxic people. But when they come together, I think it was because Harry was very well loved that people wanted to support Meghan. It was nothing to do with her background or who she was, even though people did celebrate that. They did. The media celebrated her in the beginning. I wouldn't necessarily say we were in love with her because we didn't really know her. Nobody did. All we knew was that he'd married this uh, B-list actress. People probably then watched a bit of Suits and saw her or maybe watched Suits before um, and saw her. And so we were taking her on face value, which is a lot of what we do um, in society we take people on face value and and I definitely think the British people did this and also because they wanted to support Harry they wanted Harry as, as, as a nation we wanted Harry to find love William has obviously Prince William has found love with with Catherine and um, so we wanted Harry to find the same so of course when it comes you know to the forefront that he's married this woman and we don't really know who she is so of course we're taking her on face value then what started to happen was, which is where I think the problem started to arise, was diva-like behaviour was starting to be picked up on. There was the changing of their staff um, more often than what should be necessary. There were things that were slightly being leaked about her behaviour, diva demands, um, Harry's, even Harry's behaviour. And I think it even though we knew Harry could be like this, it was the fact that it was kind of both of them together. It was almost making sort of more 
in a sense headline because this was now two people that were kind of behaving in the same way and again in the beginning people didn't really say too much um because I think, again, they wanted to support the relationship. And then, of course, we had the marriage. And then, as we know, everything else has happened since then. But I think that the love story ended when, if I'm honest, probably it started to happen just before. But I think people were so utterly disappointed in Megxit. Um, I truly think that people, a lot of people had extremely high hopes for the four of them being together this the fab four they were called um and obviously the way that they both come onto the scene is that you know we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing that we're going to hit the ground running um and i think that a lot of people were absolutely devastated when they were literally like we're leaving you know people were kind of like wait what and i think people scramble to scrambled to kind of find some understanding so of course they latched on to their version which I do think is their version I don't think that's the truth I've said before that I truly think they were asked to leave well in all honesty I think she was asked to leave and then Harry was given a choice either you stay or you leave with her and he chose to leave with her now I also think as well like I've said before um in a sense, perhaps publicly, he had no choice because how could you, how could you leave, no, sorry, how could you stay behind publicly when allegedly your wife is now in Canada with your alleged child? Now, obviously, I have spoken at length about what I think really happened. And I do think that there was something going on behind the scenes. And I do think it is also to do with the alleged child that they call Archie. I won't go into that here because obviously I have done a video on that. And if you haven't seen that, please go and check that out. Um, but anyway, so this whole thing of like we were everyone was in love with Harry and Meghan. I don't necessarily think they were because we didn't really know Meghan. I think we were in love with the idea of what they were telling us their version of what they were going to do and the idea of what what the potential of what could have been but I think Harry and Meghan's hatred of the media is because the media probably along with the royal family were in their eyes the ones that ruined everything they did not want to leave I am going to say this till I am blue in the face these actions that we are getting now are not of two people that wanted to leave. Look at the way they attack the media. Look at the way they attack the royal family. Look at the way they attack literally anyone that has said no to them or said something bad about them. Look at the way she passive aggressively attacks Hollywood because they rejected her. So this to me is two people that did not want to leave. However, I will say that they wanted their cake and eaten it. E eaten it? Eat it. <laughs> Which is, if for those of you who don't understand, it's basically they want it everything their own way. So they wanted to be part of the royal family. They wanted all the accolade and the, the royalties and everything else that come with that. Um, but they didn't want to do the the boring stuff. They didn't want to do the, you know, going to care centres or cutting ribbons at, say, you know, the way that people stereotype the royal family. That's what they, well, to be fair, what she, I don't believe she wanted to do that. I think she thought it was all going to be tinsel and tiaras, uh, you know, royal events, wearing ball gowns and tiaras. It's all very glamorous, which there is. But there's also, it's hard work. The royal family bring a lot to the UK. And it's very, very grueling hard work at times. Um, and so I think that's the side of it she didn't want. But what she probably also wanted was to, to, for it to open the doors to Hollywood. I, I, I will swear down that I believe that this is what she wanted. She wanted to be famous. She wasn't getting it when she was in the States because obviously the show suits wasn't opening those doors for her she was being written out so it's like she had to find some way of climbing that next la ladder so for her it was finding an influential man and she decided to she wanted Britain because she thought she could be famous in Britain and then that would open doors for her 
So I think her initial aim was to climb the Hollywood elite. You also have to look at their behaviour, the way they behave now. Like everywhere they go, they choose the front entrance. Harry, he could have gone in the side door with this court case. He could have gone in the side door, but he didn't. He went in the front entrance because he needs to get maximum exposure. Harry and Meghan do the same thing in the States. Whenever they are seen out and about together without their children, alleged, um, they go in the front entrance. They go to the most affluent places that perhaps the paps stand outside because they know that the rich and famous go there. But rather than take a side entrance or a back entrance, she comes out of the front. He comes, he goes in the front or comes out of the front. They both do because most celebrities don't want to be seen. They want their privacy. How many times do we see celebrities, um, and I talk about A-list celebrities, that, you know, do things in secret? You know, a lot of the times, you know, we don't see anything about them. If you want to stay private, you can stay private. A lot of celebrities do not want to be in the public eye. You know, you've even got the likes of Keanu Reeves, who just, who gets on the subway and just sits like, you know, and he's he's worked a way of blending in and actually not really being papped at all. People respect that. But Harry and Meghan do not want privacy. They want to be seen, which is why whenever something comes out in the media, they have to be seen publicly together. So in my mind, this is what she aligned to do. She wanted to be in Hollywood. And this is why I have said so many times, which is why they are attacking the people that they believe ruined everything for them because they take zero responsibility for anything. So they attack Hollywood. They, well, she does. They attack, um, which she did in her podcast. They attack the media. They want censorship of the media, but yet they utilize the media when it suits them. You have to kind of think, hang on a minute. If you were that against the media, why do you cherry pick what you want to, what you want to kind of, why do you want to be papped? All the positive stories that get leaked by their PR team or whatever it is that they do, they're happy for those to come out. But it's the negative ones because it's the negative ones which, in my eyes, are probably more likely to be the truth. And they don't want that being exposed. And I think the more that we go into this, the more that they are terrified of anything that's the truth being exposed, i.e. the children or Meghan's past, Harry's past. So when you have the likes of Russell Myers, who is a, a, someone who was very much against what the, how they behave, suddenly almost like doing a 180 and basically making it out like as if, well, all they need to do is do some charity work and they'll be forgiven. No, they won't. And I agree with what the Royal Grift is saying. They absolutely will not be forgiven. It will not be forgotten that they trashed the late queen and, and, and her husband while he was lying in hospital, deathly ill, dying even. They did not think twice about going on Oprah and allowing that to get put out causing the late queen such distress in the later years of her life. It was bullying behaviour, elderly abuse, if you like. And just because they basically said, well, we weren't referring to the, the actual queen. This was her legacy. The later years of her life, which she, this woman was just, in my eyes, the, the, a one of a kind. And they chose to trash the the monarchy which is her it's her work it's her legacy and then her family her son her grandchildren her grandson she watched as they tried to overshadow tried to put down criticize accuse of things and then for two years basically calling her a racist 
um, even if they didn't say it was specifically her, but they kind of did. And then two years later, after she passes away, to say, yeah, no, we didn't really say that. We don't think that. People do not forget these things. They do not forget these things. Now, I believe, I truly will believe that they are trying to undermine the monarchy so badly because this, in my opinion, is just pure and simple jealousy. These two have been told no. They have been told they cannot have their cake and eat it. And they, I believe both her and him do not want William to be king and Catherine to be queen. So in my opinion, it's almost like if we undermine this so much, there is every chance that the monarchy will be disbanded before William becomes king. And that, in my opinion, is, is, is where they're heading. But what I find a tad confusing is if the monarchy is disbanded, Harry and Meghan literally become obsolete as well. Because it is only the connection to the royal family that actually gives them anything. Nobody would care about them if they were just Harry, just Meghan. Because in all honesty, that is proven by the fact that nobody knew who Meghan was before marrying Harry. So that would pretty much carry on. If she had not have married Harry, um, this that would have that would have carried on. Hollywood was not interested in her. You know, she's, she was nearly 40 years of age. And so she marries somebody to create that connection, you know, and that, and that notoriety to keep going. But without the royal family, they then just become Harry and Meghan. Or, you know, maybe they'll be, he'll be Earl or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't quite know how it works if, um, if the royal family is disbanded. I mean, not that I want that to happen or think that will happen, but they have damaged the royal family. Now, I will say that I think obviously Prince Charles's visit to Germany has been amazing. And um, Prince Charles, I said Prince Charles. I do apologise. King Charles and Queen Consort, uh, Camilla, um, visit to Germany has been amazing. And you've only got to look at the crowds to see how well loved that people were queuing and waiting in the cold to see them. We don't see that with Harry and Meghan. Whenever they turn up anywhere, they might get papped for a bit. But there's nobody there. Nobody there. Um, when the Prince and Princess of Wales travel to America, look at the crowds that were outside waiting for them. In the rain, in the cold. So it does show you still how popular they are so yes they might have been slightly damaged by what harry and megan are doing but however their um popularity is like i say is is just the lowest it could possibly be harry has gone from being one of well under the queen the most liked and loved royal to now i think in uh, uh, someone said to me that it's actually below below andrew now I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. But yeah, so I think when you've got the likes of these journalists who frustrate the heck out of me, and I've said I do not have a lot of love for the way the media, the journalists do not seem to be journalists anymore. You know, what happened to journalistic integrity? It, it, that That's just gone. You know, journalists used to seek the truth. And now we we, we don't have any of that now. And when you've got the likes of people like Russell Myers who are basically just watering everything down and basically saying, well, all they need to do is just do some charity work. Just focus on that. And then people perhaps will start, you know, liking them again. No, Russell, they won't. You might get the odd few. And maybe if they separated or divorced and Harry then focused on actually doing some good work, um, he might go up in people's um opinions but in my opinion harry is just as bad as megan on his own um you know megan might be pulling the strings a little bit behind the scenes or she started off that way but this is harry this has always been harry and i've said this from the word go harry is not a likable 
person. He's not. He is misogynistic, which again is swept under the thing. He's put it in this book. Nothing is being said about that. Nothing gets said about the way he behaves, the, what, how he deals with people. The media just seem to want to give him this uh, positive, and I'm not saying all, I'm um, just saying some, this positive coverage. You know, he spends his life complaining and blaming, which is why his reputation is in the toilet, which is why they consistently try to revamp their image, because they, they think people are stupid. That people are going to be like, oh, you know what, you, you, you've jumped on this bandwagon. So, you know what, that's really great. We're going to forgive you for everything else that you've done. People do not. People do not forgive. You know, especially when the late Queen was so popular and they intentionally attempted to ruin the last couple of years of her life. And I think that's shocking. And I think what's even more shocking is people like Russell Myers basically saying that's, um, that what they did wasn't that. But it's almost like, well, well, we can forget about that. If they just do a bit of good work, we can forget about that. And again, like I always do, I try and give this a perspective to our real lives. This is the, the equivalent of you being betrayed for years by a family member. And they do a couple of good things and that you're you're expected to forgive and forget. Now, I'm not saying there are some people that don't do that. I'm sure there are. But there are people that think, hang on a minute, this takes time. If you want to be forgiven for something, firstly, to me, you have to work at it and, and do it for as long as needed um, for the people that you've hurt. So Harry would have to really work on himself and work on that forgiveness, not just do a couple of good things. And then everyone is kind of like, oh, OK, that's all right then. And it's the same for anyone else. If you have someone in your life that has really betrayed you. You know, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, I've forgiven them. Have you? Because forgiveness isn't just words. Forgiving someone isn't just saying, um, oh, I forgive you. Because the reason you know you haven't is because when you're angry at them or you're there in the quiet moments, it's still there. You have to work on forgiving somebody as much as somebody has to work on forgiveness, uh, you know, getting that forgiveness from others. Because it is not a simple case of saying, oh, I forgive you and then it's all OK again. Forgiveness isn't words. It's, it's deep rooted. And a lot of the time, people need to see the evidence that you've changed. And that takes as long as it takes. When someone does something, like, you know, if we want to use cheating, someone's cheated on you in your relationship, and then you want to try and work it out. And you say, you know what, I've forgiven you for cheating. But yet when you have an argument, you bring it up or you feel that you don't trust them or you're checking their phone. You haven't forgiven them. You want to for whatever reason, whether it's, it was a, you feel it was a mistake and, and, and you love them and, but they've hurt you. And I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that you've been deeply hurt. Your trust has been broken and that person needs to work on that. So don't say you forgive somebody until you truly believe you have, because that takes time and it takes as long as needed. Because a lot of the time, when you say you forgive somebody, that person then thinks that they, they've been forgiven but then you bring it up and that person gets angry because you bring it you're bringing it up it is okay to say to somebody you know what I want to forgive you and I'm going to work on that as much as you also must work on gaining that trust again and that takes time and it takes as long as needed it's different for everybody and you know when you've forgiven somebody because it's almost like there's a it's not you can't quantify it it's kind of like an inner peace it's like it, when you forgive somebody it's just it's just there you don't feel that rage or that anger or that mistrust it's it it just it's there and that takes work it is not a simple case of i forgive you oh well it's all okay again and it's the same with the royal family and the british people well not just the british people anyone who's a royalist who feels deeply betrayed by harry and meghan's behavior if they want forgiveness, if that's at all possible, 
because I'm I know that a lot of you will be in the comments like they they will never be forgiven. I look I I hear you I do. I'm just saying hypothetically if they want forgiveness they have to work on that forgiveness they have to earn the trust of the people and in all honesty they may never get that back and personally speaking i don't think anyone will ever trust megan again regardless and all and they're probably right because when you've got someone who's got narcissistic personality disorder which i believe she has it's not a formal diagnosis um, but i believe she has because i've worked with this a long time um in my opinion they don't change. They will never change because they don't believe they're the problem. Now, Harry, on the other hand, potentially with the right therapy, and I will say this, the right therapy, not therapists that enable his behaviour or his lying, um, a therapist that is actually someone that would call them out or call him out on his BS um, and create him to take responsibility and ownership of what he's doing with enough work on himself and then working on that forgiveness to the people that he's hurt and betrayed his family his country anyone else his friends um yes it is very possible that people might slowly start to forgive him might but they're also well within their rights to not they can quite happily go, you know what, Harry, I appreciate the fact you're working on yourself. But however, I feel so angry and so betrayed by you, but I actually don't feel like I want to forgive you. That's their right too. But for this idea that Russell Myers is saying, well, you know what, they just need to do a bit of charity work and just need to focus on those things and people will be kind of OK again. No, Russell, we won't. And shame on you for actually diminishing how we truly feel as a country or people how betrayed we feel by somebody who was given everything every opportunity every privilege possible and has literally just slapped us right in the face with it and then not only that allowed his wife to do the same so no it is gonna take time or maybe never for some people um, sorry, I'm just going to calm down on the rant there. But I just, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, so, if for those of you, and I know that a lot of you do follow the Royal Grift. Uh, so, for those of you who don't, go across and give her a a, a, a look. Because she's very good. Very good. Um, and I take my hat off to her for the hard work that she puts in. Um, so, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it please give it a thumbs up uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel then please consider doing so because it does help the algorithm and obviously it helps me grow and i would appreciate that um i just want to give a little shout out to my earrings <laughs> these are the ones i got i got these from glastonbury i i love them they're so pretty they, they remind me of uh it's like little uh dragonfly wings that I mean, not like really, really, because obviously that'd be that'd be mean. But yeah, they just remind me of that. And they're really pretty. And I, and I really like them. Yeah. And yes, for the people that mentioned, I have got glittery bits in my hair. Whenever I go to Glastonbury, I always do that. I always get some glittery bits put in my hair. I think um, I, I like shiny things. Um, so I want to say thank you to the people that are sending me things by my PO box. I have a lot of wonderful letters and cards. Um, thank you so much. I love reading them. I love connecting with you all. Uh, thank you for the little gifts that I get sent. Um, I don't always put them on the channel because a lot of people send me things that they would not, they don't want me to put on the channel. Um, I guess because they're private etc and i respect that so thank you so much for the little things that i'm sent the people that are sending things for arthur he's very grateful um he loves them and i will say um so just uh, but i also would like to say for the people so you do not waste your money um arthur doesn't have um any wheat based products so i just want to say this not to be picky and you know to i mean because i certainly don't want you to spend your hard-earned money um in in cause some of these things can be a little bit expensive and i really don't want that but i don't want you to waste your money um so sometimes i get sent things for arthur and i can't give them to him however but i do have a lovely dog walker and so what i do is i pass them on to her because she does a wonderful job and she looks after these amazing doggies including arthur um 
And so I then pass them on to her. So they do go to a good home. They don't get wasted. Um, but I just want you to know that in case you're thinking of sending Arthur something, please check the ingredients because if it's got wheat in it, um, he he won't eat it. But like I say, I do pass them on. So thank you so much also, you know, to the people that have been sending me things. I really, really do appreciate it. And if people that still ask me, there is a PO box. It is in the description box below. Um, it's also in my bio link of my YouTube channel. It's a PO box um, for tea and therapy. You can send things there. However, I do appreciate the way the economy is right now. And so first and foremost, please look after yourself. It's not necessary to send me anything. I love it. I'm grateful, but it's not not necessary. Um, what else? Uh, yes, if you would like to uh, email me, my email address is also below. Below, um, You can uh, become a member if you choose to. There's Patreon, although a few people have said to me they're having a few issues with Patreon at the minute, so I might have to possibly have find another route with that because I'm not sure um, with that. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so my link to my Just Therapy channel is also there. Thank you to everyone who's supporting my son's channel. The link is also there. Um, I would also put the link to the Royal Grift um, below as well if you don't follow her. Um, so you can just click on that and go straight to her channel and subscribe or watch her videos, whatever it is. Please go and like her because I think she deserves all the support in the world for the research that she does. Um, what else? I think, well, yeah, anything else that you need to know will be in the description box of my videos. Everything is there. Um, so please check that out. Um, yeah. So that being said, that's it for today. Um, I will be doing a, a video on my channel to do with confidence on my Just Therapy channel. So if you want to check that out, please, that will be going up tomorrow, I believe. So, yeah, so have a look at that. How to work on your confidence, build your confidence, why you might lack confidence. Um, so, yeah, if you if you struggle with that, then go and go ahead and check that out tomorrow. Um, yeah, and that's it from me. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I will see you in my next video. So take care, Bubbles. And I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Bye-bye.